Okay. Now let's say that instead I took a particle here and I was taking a particle here. So instead of doing the, that, let's say what happens between these two particles. You see that this particle at x1 is at its maximum, this particle at x2 is at its minima. Now what is this distance? This distance as you can see is lambda by 2. Okay. Now to reach to this position, how much addition in phase should I do? You know that y is equal to y1 sine of sine of at x1, the angle was alpha. Now you see that this displacement in y direction is just the negative of this displacement. So if I write this as y1, y2 is minus y1 or I can write y2 as minus a1 sine of alpha. Now I can write this also as a1 sine of alpha plus pi. So you can very well see that moving ahead a distance of lambda by 2 is equivalent to adding a phase of pi. Now from here, let's say I take a point here. These two points are in phase because you see that at, a, at any time t, this and this displacement are same. So this distance is lambda. So this is, these two are in phase, these two are out of phase because when this is maximum, this is minimum, this is minimum, this is maximum. So I can also write that these and these are out of phase because these two are in phase, these two are out of phase. So these two are out of phase. So I can write this as a1 sine of pi plus again a distance of lambda units means adding 2 pi. So I can write that lambda by 2 was equal to addition of pi. Lambda by 2 plus lambda was equivalent to adding of pi plus 2 pi. You know that lambda by 2 plus k pi is equivalent to adding a distance of pi plus 2 k pi because k sorry k lambda here k lambda is equivalent to 2 k pi. So I can write that if I take lambda common here I get 2 k plus 1 pi. So you see that for any position x if I take points at a distance of lambda k plus half units away then I get points like this, this which are completely out of phase with these points. When I say completely out, out of phase, what I mean is when this particle at x1 is at its maximum, this is at its minimum. When this is at its minimum here, this is at its maximum here. When this is 0, this is also 0. So basically what is happening is, it's some sort of, you can say that the displacement at x2, y2 is equal to minus of y1. So this is when we call that the displacements are out of phase or the particles at two points are out of phase. Now let's say that I have a point x here. Now let's say that there are two points s1, s2. A wave is coming from S1. So since a wave is coming from here, when the wave reaches here, let's say that because of this S1, the there's a displacement in y direction. Because wave is basically a disturbance. So when the disturbance reaches here, there's a displacement in y direction. Now what happens when a wave from S2 also strikes this? What happens? This wave interferes with the displacement produced by this wave. And this phenomena is known as interference because this wave at S2 is interfering with the wave of S1. Now S2 interferes with S1. So what happens? S2 interferes with the displacement produced by S1. So finally what happens? The final displacement is the resultant of the displacement produced by S2 and S1. See S1 tries to produce a displacement, S2 also tries to produce a displacement. And the final displacement is the resultant of the vector sum of the uh, displacements produced by both the waves. Now, 
how do I find that? I find that using the superposition principle. So what I do, I find out the what is the displacement produced by S1, and then I find out what is the pro uh, displacement produced by S2, and then I add them vectorially. So if the displacement produced by S1 is let's say five centimeter, and the displacement produced by S2 is let's say minus two point five centimeter, the final displacement here will be two point five centimeter in this direction. Similarly, if the displacement produced by S1 is five, S2 is also plus five. Both the displacements get added up, and we have a displacement net displacement in this direction known as ten centimeter. Okay, now let's say that this distance is x one, and this distance is x two. So, what is the equation of the wave reaching here due to s one? I can write this as let's say a one sine two pi by t t minus two pi by Lambda s one plus some phi one. The equation of the wave coming from s two will be a two sine two pi by t t minus two pi by lambda x two plus phi two. Now, if I say that these two waves arrive in phase at this point, that means what? When I say that these two point, uh, these two waves arrive at this point in phase, that means what? This angle, let's say alpha one, this angle, let's say alpha two, are always same. Is it? Is it alpha two is always equal to alpha one? When I say that the two waves always arrive at this point in phase, no. See, as I told you, that if I have a wave, if this was the point x one, then particles or at a, at a distance of k lambda were in phase. So, which in terms of phase, I told you that if at x one phase was alpha one, then at Phases of alpha one plus two k pi, the distances x two, x three, x four, whatever po points we get at phases of alpha one plus two k pi, all the particles are in phase, as I told you. So when I had a wave like this, this was in phase with this, this was in phase with this. This has a this had a phase of phase of alpha, this had a phase of alpha plus two pi, this had a phase of alpha plus four pi. Similarly, all the points which Had a phase of alpha plus two k pi, were in phase with this point. So when I say that these two points are in phase, sorry, these two waves are in phase uh, here. That means what? If this is alpha two, this alpha one has to be some value like alpha two plus two k pi. Because as I told that for any point x one. Displacements at phases of alpha plus two k pi were in phase. So similarly, if these two waves are in phase here, if this has a phase of alpha two, this has to be have a phase of alpha two plus two k pi.